at a normal rate of climb. But the terrain is what blocks the whole action at the upcountry side of the strip. Now then, how much of a downwind can you accept? I think the answer here is, if you're nervous or apprehensive, just don't go. We have a runway gradient here of uh, nearly 2%. It's uh, very significant and really affects an airplane's performance. Local pilots here never take off uphill, which would be taking off towards town. We do all our takeoffs to the north on runway 33, and we land on 1-5. The biggest thing that any pilot has to learn is not to be afraid of flying in the mountains, just learn how to do it and get rid of all that apprehension and fear. Ignorance is the thing that creates fear, and fear is the thing that creates accidents. The final killer in most accidents is panic, created by a whole series of events. You're going to have a lot better chance of making it, number one, if you're not overloaded. If you're in a good performing airplane, and your pilot technique is average or better, and if you've had some experience at it, things are going to be a lot more rosy than if none of those others are true. Somebody really wants to learn how to fly in the mountains. Boy, I mean, they can sure learn how to do it. Because all they have to do is find somebody that knows how to do it better than they do. And they can learn. Everything's capsulized these days, and if I had to capsulize mountain flying, I'd start by saying, learn how to fly your airplane particularly at slow speeds and make short fill landings and gusty winds. And learn good weather from bad. And stay out of the mountains when it's bad, fly when it's good, and it'll be no trouble and you'll have a good time. Mm -hmm.